Hello, my name is Ron, and I have two very thought-provoking questions for you today. Do you believe that God performs miracles? And if so, have you ever seen or experienced one? Well, I've had the opportunity to ask these questions of many people over the years, and quite obviously I've received many different responses. But for the most part, I've found that people believe that God is capable of performing miracles, They've heard of them, but they've never actually seen or experienced one in person. Well, in the brief time that we have together, I'm going to present to you my evidence that God is still in the miracle business, and I'm going to give you the opportunity to see one in person. But first, let me give you some background that will lay the groundwork for the evidence that I'm going to present to you. I wasn't raised in a Christian home. I had very little exposure to the church or the things relating to God. And yet somehow I grew up believing that God existed, that he was real. But I didn't think he had anything to do with me. In fact, I felt that God was just too busy doing important things like running the universe than to be interested in someone as insignificant as I was. As a teenager, I began to run around with my buddies and to, to uh, drink alcohol, and soon alcohol abuse became a pattern in my life. And I grew up, and I worked, I married, I had two beautiful children, but then I began to experiment with drugs. And before I knew it, drug and alcohol abuse became a daily part of my life. I became what you might call a functioning abuser. You know, if you looked at my life on the outside, you would think I had it all together. But I, like many of you may be listening to me right now, I looked squeaky clean on the outside, but I was very good at hiding what was going on in the inside and what I was involved with every night and every weekend. Unfortunately, you can only live that lifestyle for so long before everything begins to unravel. And unravel it did. Eventually, I lost my marriage, my children, my sense of self-worth, my hope, and even my reason for living. On a night that is still just as real and vivid to me uh, today as it was then, I sat at the table in that tiny apartment I was living in by myself, and I wrote out letters to my two daughters explaining to them why their daddy had taken his life. Somehow in my twisted way of thinking, I, I thought maybe this would help them to understand that it wasn't their fault, that their daddy had just become too tired to go on living. And I sealed those letters, and I placed them where they could be easily found. And then I picked up the gun that was laying on the table, and I placed the barrel to my temple. And I remember that it was deathly quiet, as if I were the only person on earth. And my finger was on the trigger, it was trembling, my hand was shaking, tears were running down my face. And it was almost as if a voice was whispering in one ear, go ahead, pull the trigger. Death is the only way you're going to find peace and relief from the pain. And in the other ear, it was like a voice was whispering, don't do this, there is hope, tomorrow will be better. Just hold on. And a battle was raging over my life and my soul. I don't know how long I sat there like that. It seemed like hours. But I didn't have the courage to pull the trigger, and eventually I placed the gun back on the table. But this voice kept whispering, you are such a loser. You can't even do this right. But I didn't know. I had no knowledge of the fact that God in his infinite mercy was working behind the scenes. In an act of divine intervention, I found myself a few days later going to a small church that was very near my apartment. 
And I met the pastor there, and he told me, he says, I don't know where you've been, what you've done. I don't know what you're involved in now. And you know what? I don't care. It doesn't matter. I just want you to know that God loves you. He sent his son to die for you, and he has a plan and a purpose for your life. Well, I listened, but I didn't make a decision that day. But over the next few days, I couldn't eat or sleep. And it seemed that all I kept hearing was the name of Jesus. And everywhere I looked, I saw Jesus. And on a Sunday morning, two weeks later, I returned to that church. And I got on my knees. And I surrendered my life to Jesus, recognizing that he was my last and my only hope. Well, you remember I told you that I was going to present my evidence to you that God still works miracles, and I was going to show you one personally. Well, I want you to know that you are looking at that miracle. Because on that very day, Jesus miraculously delivered me from my addictions, forgave me of my sins, and gave me eternal life. I am a living miracle of God. I am living proof of the life-changing power of a loving and merciful God. I am that miracle. You know, when I got up from my knees that morning in that little church, I knew that I wasn't the same person who had walked in that day. And as I stood up, I... I felt clean for the first time in my life. I felt the weight of the world lifted from my shoulders. And I had a purpose for living. And that's a miracle that only God can perform. And do you know what's so great about it? God wants to do that same miracle in your life today if you will only place your faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. And I would love to have the opportunity and the privilege of helping you to understand what that means and of making that decision so that you can also say God still performs miracles. Thank you and God bless you.